So today we're going back to Paris to meet another artist who's in my book, The Art Lovers Guide to Paris, in the chapter Art Close and Personal. James Papura is from Ohio. His work is very dramatic, very colourful. You're going to see it for yourself and find out a little bit more about how James is working at 59 and at the moment at home. So... Hi, Ruby. Hi. How are you? Yeah, you're in St. Michel. Yes, uh, basically two blocks directly south of Notre Dame. Were you there when it burnt down? There was all the sirens and stuff for like an hour, and I was like, there can't be that many heart attacks. <gasps> so I went up to the balcony and saw everyone else was on their balcony, and I turned to my right, and there was all the smoke. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's nice that you're in the center. It's nice that you have a balcony also. Really lucky because on the host menu in buildings, the full balcony is on the second floor and the fifth floor. So we have the full balcony. You can step out on. I've just got like my private garden. I've got tons of plants and flowers, and it's actually my favorite place in Paris. I like yeah. your setup. I've got my easel and all my paints and everything set up in here. It's awesome. What have you been working on? What's this one here? Like basically five years ago, I did a commission for someone who said, I, I like your work. I would like you to do something in blue. I did a paint for him called Blue Sunset. And he loved it. And it's one of my favorites. So then someone saw that and asked me to do something like it. And this is basically the eighth or ninth or tenth version of that painting. This is a commission. And the guy says, I want that painting, but I would like you to do put a road or a river leading to a distant city mysterious city with a skyscraper that's lit up and uh, the light coming down from the sky in a blue fog. I was like, that's pretty specific. And I'm <laughs> like, I, I got this. So um, this is basically done. Let's talk a little bit about your works. I remember you told me that it all started with a dream of a color blue. Tell me the story. So I was in grad school in California and this was about 1998. And I had one night I had this dream and in the dream there was a blue. Everything was a certain blue, not far off from the color of this t-shirt. So like the air was blue, everything was blue. And I woke up and I had this color stuck in my head for years. And so literally five years later, I went into an art supply store with the intention of recreating this blue. So I bought blues that were close to it and white and stuff. I'm like, well, I'm probably going to need a canvas and some brushes. So, because I've never taken, I'm self-taught. So I never took an art class or anything like that. So my first painting was, it was called Blue Dream. And then while I was painting that painting, I kind of got stuck. And so then I wasn't sure how I progressed with it. So then I put on Ravel's Bolero and I was listening to the music and I started to see images and colors and it was with the help of that music that i was able to finish the painting and then i found out that it's called synesthesia where you, you can hear music and you interpret it you see colors and movement and so sometimes i paint music Tell me when you first uh, got to Rivoli. I had to apply like three times because they kept losing my application. <laughs> Third time <laughs> lucky. And then I met Linda McCluskey there. It's really thanks to her that I'm still there. You know, you're supposed to leave after your six months. Um, I actually ended up sharing with her. Uh, I finally got a permanent spot. And for people who don't know 59, uh, tell me a little bit about what it is, what the vibe is and why it's so special. I like to refer to it as kind of like a museum where you can actually see the work being created. And it's like a place also where the artists are alive. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, museum, they're all dead. So it's a place where you can go and watch work being created it's in central Paris. So it's, you don't have to go far out. It's right in the middle of town and it's free. And it's just a unique experience for people to watch art being created and to see how it's done. Mm -hmm. And for people, for the artists that are there, it, it develops a community. Yeah, it does. We're 
pretty tight knit community. The most intriguing for me is to see people's reaction because there's a lot of artists who they have an art show or something at a gallery and they're there for the art opening and they see that reaction and that's it. But where I am, we get about 4,000 people a week. So there's all kinds of people coming and going, different ages from all over the world. And so just to see the reaction, even if they don't like it, I don't really care, but it's just like to see <laughs> what it does to them. Yeah, I remember Linda telling me also that she realized when she was at 59 that there were so many people that saw her work that some people didn't like it, but there's always people that did. And she realized that it didn't actually matter. The most important thing was that she liked her own work. She's exactly right. Because, you know, um, in the end, that's what matters. If you like your own work, it, you, know, you don't really care what the, the critics have to say. Because, mm. you know, sometimes I do landscape paintings, which are more like realistic and figurative. And some people really like those and they like the abstracts less. And some people don't really like the landscapes in general, but they really love my abstracts. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you never know what you're going to get. You described your work as uh, ironic romanticism. What was it? Yeah, romantic irony. Tell me what romantic irony is in relation to your artwork. For instance, there's a couple paintings I have of Paris where I've done where you've got like basically Place de la Concorde. There's the Ferris wheel. Uh, crescent shaped moon there's dark purples and there's iridescent purples and that was one of my favorite paintings it's kind of romantic but there's a certain irony in the images and the same with the one i did of the uh, paris opera house this huge flowing like scarf in front of it i try to make it romantic in an idealistic way and then also ironic at the same time, sometimes when I do things like that. And um, when you're painting, do you know what it's going to be or do you discover it on the journey? Landscapes, I know exactly the form it's gonna take. Uh, so it's kind of stressful to get the form down because there's always this battle between like, how real do you wanna keep it? And how much do you wanna like just express the, the feeling of the place? So in those cases, I kind of know where it's headed. Other times, I just feel like purple, purple goes off in my head. And then I have no idea where, where it's going or what's going to happen. And then I'm like, uh, this needs yellow. And then the yellow needs orange. And so then there's this dialogue that happens on the canvas. And I don't really think about it. I just kind of, it's kind of instinct. And it just all comes together. Mm. Talk to me about the, the zone that you go into when you're painting. Hours go by and I don't even know it. And uh, so it's like this one I worked on uh, yesterday uh, for probably six hours. And it, it's not an abstract, but it's, it's an imaginary landscape, basically. But I was really into tulip field and the distance and the perspective and I just got lost in it for I think six hours went by and I'm like what time was it oh my god it looks like a UFO is about to land in a field Oh yeah, see, it's it's uh it's um it, it could be a UFO. I don't know. It's what you see. That, that's what that's important. I think when you look at a work, it's like it can be. People ask me, you know, what's it supposed to be, and I don't like to answer that question. I like to say, well, what do you see? So there you go. For you, it's a UFO. Mm -hmm. Are you doing it with brushes or this? Can you see that? Yeah. So it's like a paint spatula and I just like to put the paint on the back of it and just take it and kind of put it on like that. And there's different lengths. Um, some have round edges, some have uh, more corner edges. And so it, it gives nice flat movements. And you can make super, super, super fine lines. I will put the paint directly on 
with the tube. Okay. I'll put it on my fingers first, uh, then I'll paint with my fingers. Um, and then of course I have um, regular brushes. Mm -hmm. If people at home uh, and they want to start doing some artwork and they don't necessarily have a background in art, what tips would you give to get them going? No matter what you do, if it's not something you had intended on doing, you have to work with it and make it part of what you're doing and just kind of go with the flow. You're not like you're going to get fired from life just because, you know, you made a wrong brush stroke or picked the wrong color. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. So if you can basically accept that, I think if you can overcome that obstacle of the fear, then I think you're going to gonna have a lot more fun. I want to ask why you think art is important right now. As it's a vessel, it is a means to escape and to create and to free ourselves. So like when I was doing, when I did my series of 12 color pyramids, it they kind of represent the struggle against confinement. So it was kind of therapeutic to do that by having very colorful canvases all day, every day. It served as an outlet. When this is all over, why should people come to Paris and go on an art, an art excursion? Uh, I would say arguably the most important city for art, where all of the artists have come historically over just centuries uh, and there, there are just so many museums and there's 59 Rivoli which is a place that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world so that's an experience that you're not going to get anywhere else there's just so much to see and also Paris is very walkable what do you love the most about being an artist in Paris I'm inspired by the light that you get off of the river a lot during the day or at night, especially at night, because you get the traffic lights that shimmer off the river and they turn like shades of copper and silver and gold and yellow and green and white and iridescent and all these colors. And so I find that very inspiring. And also the intimacy you feel, I know it's a big city, but you feel a certain intimacy in a place that has that's on this scale. Yeah. Can you show me your balcony? Oh, let's see here. Let me move this out of the way. So I can just say a little bonjour to Paris. So, uh, can you oh, wow. see? Like a very pretty balcony. Yeah, my easel is right by the window, so I get tons of light. And then you can look down, and there's Place Maubert. Oh, your nice to be inspired by that view. What are you planning for the rest of the day? Can you see those five? Uh, yep. Okay, so I'm going to do five versions of the Eiffel Tower. Cool. Yeah, in uh, tricolor. So each canvas, there's five canvases, they're going to be tricolor, and there's going to be three Eiffel Towers on each one. So that's a total of 15 Eiffel Towers today. That's a lot of Eiffel Towers. I better let, let you get to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you picture, pictures when I'm done with these Eiffel Towers. Fantastic. Can't wait to see them. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Good day. Have a good day. Have, happy painting. Thanks. <laughs> happy painting, you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.